Jonathan Kahn has emerged recently as one of God's most powerful prophetic voices calling this nation to repentance and warning us of judgment and destruction if we refuse to repent. At our 2018 Bible conference he spoke about a fascinating biblical blueprint that is unfolding in our nation today. Stay tuned. Lamb and Lion Ministries presents Christ in Prophecy, a program that focuses on the fundamentals of Bible prophecy, showing how current events in the news relate to biblical predictions of end time events and the soon return of Jesus. Now, here's your host, Dr. David Reagan. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope, and welcome to Christ in Prophecy. The theme of our 2018 Bible conference was God's Prophetic Voices to America. At the conference, we featured several of the prophetic voices that were mentioned in the book that I wrote with the same title. One of those voices was Jonathan Kahn, best selling author and rabbi of a Messianic congregation in Wayne, New Jersey. During his presentation, he revealed a biblical blueprint for what is happening in our nation today. Here now, is Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Shalom. No, I'm sorry, I'm in Texas. That, that's wrong. Shalom, y'all. There are rule books I have here. I bring you greetings from the promised land, New Jersey. I flew in. Listen, it's my honor to be here. Um, I'm flying out after this, but I'll, I'll meet you afterwards. But I wanted to do that, of course, to minister, but to also honor Dave Reagan, who has been serving the Lord and the purposes of God for so many years, in season, out of season, a faithful servant of God. And it's, so it's my honor to be here. It is written, the sons of Issachar knew the times and they knew what Israel should do. Elijah knew the times in which he lived, thus he knew what he was to do. Paul knew the times in which he lived, and thus he fulfilled his calling. It is crucial that the body of Messiah know the times in which it exists, that it might know, that we might know what we are to do in God. It's crucial. These are critical times. These are pivotal times. These are prophetic times, even in this last year, prophetic events. The ground is shifting beneath our feet. We're witnessing the greatest, most massive cultural, moral, spiritual, civilizational transformation in history. People are saying, what is going on as if it's out of control? But imagine if they discovered a master blueprint that was behind everything that is happening right now. A blueprint from over two and a half thousand years ago reveals the events of our times, not only what is to happen, what has happened, but pinpoints when, the year, in some cases the month, the week, in some cases the day, even down to the minute. Imagine if it revealed the events of our times, the, the people of our times, who is on the national stage, how long they will have on the stage, and behind each of the leaders there is an ancient blueprint that they are following without realizing it. What if it revealed the outcome of the future. What if we were replaying this? What if God is warning? If we could open up the blueprint, what would it tell us? What keys would it give? What warning would it give to us? Well, the paradigm, this is what this blueprint is, or I called it, the paradigm concerns a revelation very much linked to the harbinger. I didn't plan on writing it like the harbinger. It just came rapidly. In fact, it intersects with the revelation and warning of the harbinger. The harbinger, for those who don't know, reveals the prophetic signs from ancient times that are warning America, appeared in the last days of ancient Israel, are now reappearing around us. It is still moving forward. Now, the, the paradigm is saying that everything is part of this, not just the signs, but everything. Now, I want to say before I, I start it, it is so explosive, I have to say this, it does name names, but remember we have no enemies. We must oppose what is evil. We must pray for those who commit evil. Anything else is sin. Number two, this is, if you came here for political correctness, you came to the wrong seminar. <laughs> but we have to be eternally correct so we can hear from God. What I'm going to share here in this begins with the ancient nation of Israel. 
a nation that had known God, drove God out of its public square, called what was evil good and what was good evil, promoted immorality, promoted sexual immorality, embraced false gods and idols, chief among them the God called Baal, or we know him as Baal. He was the God that promised them prosperity and, and, the, and to prosper the works of their hands, but his worship involved priests and priestesses engaged in sexual immorality. Sex was taken out of the bonds of marriage and put on public display. Marriage was degraded in the wake of a sexual revolution. Popular culture became sexualized. Some of Baal's priests were called the Kadashem. They were male prostitutes. His worship involved the confusion of gender. Baal had his altars. He required a price to be paid for prosperity. They were to offer up his ch their children on his altars. They would approach the brazen altar, place their child in the metal arms of their God, then release their child to the flames. And the Bible records because of that, God would bring judgment. That was the metamorphosis that overtook this ancient nation. Well, there is one other nation that was also founded at its, at its inception on the word and will of God, and that nation was America. America was founded after the pattern of ancient Israel. But America, like ancient Israel, is also undergoing the same metamorphosis, turning against the God of its foundation. Likewise, we have been driving God out of the public square, calling what was evil good and what is good evil. We have promoted sexual morality all over the world. We have embraced our own idols. We would never speak it as this, but we also have followed the spirit of Baal, serving the God of increase, gain, prosperity, and as with Israel, that brings about then a sexual revolution. Marriage, we have taken it out of the marital bed and put it on display. And we have also called Sexual immorality, something treated as if it was holy. And as with Israel, we have also embraced a confusion of gender. And as with Israel's worship of Baal, there has come an offering of children. We will never call it that, but Israel offered up thousands. We have offered up millions of our unborn through a different fire. But in the fall of ancient Israel, there came a period where it accelerated, where pagan Immorality became the ruling morality of the land. It was endorsed now from the palace. The nation experienced a culture war. In America, we have also seen an acceleration in this apostasy and where an anti-biblical morality has become the ruling morality. And for the first time, it's been championed from the highest places in our culture. In the paradigm, the culture war is inaugurated with the rise of a king named Ahav. We know him as Ahab. He's divided, he's compromised, he knows of God, but he wars against him. He's the first king in Israel's history to champion the worship of Baal, meaning child sacrifice and sexual immorality and the overturning of biblical values. So too in America, we had a culture war. It was coined with a rise of a man that we know as Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton is not about, what, not about the man, not about what he knows or, no, or does not. But Bill Clinton will follow the paradigm of Ahab. He will be a man divided, brought up in the Bible belt, yet warring against the, the, the morals of God. He's compromised. Ahab was the first king to champion the, the offering up of children. Bill Clinton was the first president to champion the offering up of children in abortion. He became the first president. His link, his, his time in office was linked to sexual immorality. He, as Ahab sought to redefine biblical values, Bill Clinton would make a statement saying, we are redefining the unchanging values that have guided us from the beginning. In a chapter in the book called The Days of the King, the question asks, how long was Bill Clinton on the national stage? When did his rise to power begin? Began when he became governor of Arkansas. That was the January 1979. It ended with the end of his presidency, January 2001. How many years of Bill Clinton? 22 years of Bill Clinton. In 1 Kings, it is written, Ahab, son of Omri, reigned in Samaria for a period of 22 years. The years of Bill Clinton follow the years of King Ahab. But Ahab wasn't alone, and neither was Bill Clinton. 
In the chapter in the paradigm, it's called The Queen. A new figure enters the stage. Again, it's not about the person, it's a sign. Her name is Isabel. We know her as Jezebel. She grows up in a cosmopolitan culture, liberal values. She's the daughter of the priest of the goddess Astarte. She worships female power. She will marry Ahab, move to his land. She will adopt, never adopt the values of Israel. She'll see conservative values as something to be warred against. She will incite her husband to do the same. Hillary Clinton will follow the paradigm of Isabel, the ancient queen, without knowing it. According to the paradigm, she grows up in a cosmopolitan culture, Chicago. She venerates female power. She marries Bill Clinton, moves to the Bible Belt, never adopts traditional values. She sees those values as something to be warred against. She will, she, as Jezebel, made her goal to be to turn over the deep-seated religious beliefs of Israel for the worship of Baal, Hillary Clinton would actually make this statement. She said, deep-seated religious beliefs have to be changed. Why? So that abortion can expand. As Jezebel became the chief advocate of child sacrifice, Hillary Clinton has become the chief advocate of abortion in America. In fact, it's not opinion. Planned Parenthood voted her the abortion champion, not of the year, not of the decade, of the century. Together, the two would advocate, we're not saying they know what they're doing, but they would advocate against biblical values, even for partial birth abortion, and also to what would lead to the overturning of marriage later on. Of the two, it was Ahab who wavered back and forth, so Bill Clinton. It was Jezebel who was the, seen as the harder, the harsher one, so Hillary Clinton. The paradigm reveals secrets in high places. Jezebel, it says she brought the priests of Baal and the gods of Phoenicia, the, the, the male and female gods, into the palace. Well, it would seem impossible that that could ever happen in America. Now, I'm not going into detail. We don't have time, but it's revealed in the book. A chapter called The Goddess, the first lady and the president actually consulted with those who are called priestesses, new age high priestesses, and the first lady brought this high priestess literally into the White House, and literally the woman wrote a book at the time advocating goddess worship and mentioned the goddess that Jezebel worshiped. It all happened in the White House. We'll not go into it. But now moving on. The days of the king and queen were not just of apostasy. They were also days of scandal. Well, so too were the Clinton years. It's written that Ahab coveted a vineyard of a man named Naboth. Naboth wouldn't give it up. So Jezebel came up with a plan, had him falsely accused and killed. Ahab goes to the vineyard to take it. As he goes there, he finds a surprise. Elijah's waiting for him. Elijah exposes the sin and tells him judgment will come and will come. the end of your reign will come. And so therefore, in the same way, the Clinton years are defined by scandal. There will be a scandal that will break out, several, but the one that will mark his presidency forever will lead to his impeachment, was a scandal also of coveting, taking what was not his, breaking the Ten Commandments, the Lewinsky scandal. The fall of Ahab was linked to the tribe of Levi. I won't go into it, but it's linked to the tribe of Levi. It began as he broke the Levitical laws. It ended in the city of the Levites when he was killed. Could a modern presidential scandal actually be linked to the ancient tribe of Levi? From the name Levi comes the name Levin, from Levin comes Lewin, from Lewin comes the name Lewinsky. The name, the very name of the scandal comes from the name Levi, same tribe linked to the fall of Ahab. What does the biblical paradigm say? When was the, the, the sins of the king exposed? Happens in the 19th year of the king, Ahab. What happens if we take Clinton when he came on the national stage, 1979, add 19 year, his 19th year on the stage was 1998, the year of the scandal. Actually, it leads you to the month January, and that's the exact month of the scandal, but it's going to get more mind-boggling than that because the paradigm reveals something else. In the midst of the scandal, when Elijah rebukes Ahab, Ahab repents, at least for a time, probably on the surface, but he does. And God says, because he repented, I'm going to delay the calamities, I'm going to delay it all. It will be held off, it will still come on the nation, but it's going to be delayed. And so how long? Three years. Three years. So you got the king's repentance of the scandal, three years, and then a calamity. Did Bill Clinton ever repent? over the sins of the scandal. Well, the answer, first he denied it. He denied it for months, but then finally he did. Happened in the East Room of the White House, and he was in front of ministers. He said, I have sinned against God and man. I ask for forgiveness. He said, this is my repentance. 
So what happens if you take the date that it happened, the king's repentance at three years of Ahab, of the paradigm, will it bring you to any significant date? If you take that exact day, add three years exactly, it leads you to the date, the date it leads you to is September 11th, 2001. The day of the calamity. If you take the king's repentance, Clinton happened in the morning, takes you to the morning of 9-11, it happened, the event began at 8.30. The 9-11, the hour that it begins, 8.30, within 15 minutes it begins. The, the, the president repents from 9, in between 9 and 10 o'clock, peak of 9-11. And could the, could the event in the White House actually, could it actually contain 9-11? Well, the event ends at 10.30 in the morning to three years later at the last part of 9-11, the tower of the North Tower falls to the earth. It's 10.29, then 10.30, it's all contained. If you had known, and I didn't know, if I had known, if you had known this years before, you could have marked this on your calendar. What happens next? People think that Ahab ends and so does Jezebel. It's not what happened. What happens in the biblical paradigm is the king's reign comes to an end, but the queen goes on on the political stage. So according to the paradigm, Bill Clinton's reign comes to an end. Hillary Clinton, first time in, in the history of America, goes on on her own political career. As did her ancient prototype, Jezebel. She continues to dwell in the halls of power, and she dwells in the capital city. In 2008, Hillary Clinton seeks to become the ruler of the land, but in the paradigm, the throne goes to a younger man. He enters the paradigm, the chapter is called The Heir. Barack Obama will follow the paradigm of King Joram. King Joram will continue the policies of Ahab and Jezebel, so Obama will continue the policies. Hillary Care becomes Obamacare, abortion, uh, marriage, all that continues. But in that time, the reign of Joram is characterized by a hostility to the ways of God and the people of God. So in the years of Obama, America markedly turned away from God, and there was a distinct hostility from the highest places against religious conservatives. During the reign of Joram, Jezebel dwelt in the palace. So during the reign of Barack Obama, when he came to the White House, he comes with a former first lady, first time in American history. Barack Obama was unknown until that speech at the Democratic Convention. Keynote speech, launched his rise to power overnight. Overnight, he's spoken as a potential president. Took, when did that happen? Happened in 2004, that's the beginning. He comes on the stage just like, like lightning. When did Obama, his time on the national stage end? It, his last year as president was 2016. 2004 to 2016 is 12 years, 12 years of Barack Obama. Of his ancient prototype, Second Kings, King Joram reigned in Samaria for a period of 12 years. Now the paradigm actually will reveal also, will speak of a figure who will be the prototype of bin Laden. An enemy rises up, an arch enemy in the times of Ahab. And I won't go through it, but it actually give, it will give you the, the way he will be assassinated. It will give what he will do. It will, it will hit the assassination. It, it will ordain. It happens in the bedroom. And it will give the year. But we don't have time for that. I want to move to the next part. When does the paradigm, well actually what the paradigm reveals them of ancient Israel what about America is, a, is here we are now. It's going to come up to right where we are. In ancient Israel, the nation comes to a crossroads. If the house of Ahab continues in power, it would have sealed the nation's apostasy. All, religious liberty would have been stamped out. The word of God would have been eliminated. The people of God would have been persecuted. So in America, we reached a similar crossroads. If the reign of anti-biblical leaders or leaders who had anti-biblical agendas continued, it would have sealed America's apostasy would have sealed the Supreme Court for a generation, would have ended religious liberty. This was the campaign where Hillary Clinton actually proclaimed that your deep-seated religious beliefs have to be changed. This was the campaign when it brought the most brazen convention in the history of the Democratic Party, where they actually celebrated the killing of the unborn and vowed to strike down the Hyde Amendment so you would be directly funding the killing of babies. That was what was at stake in the last election. But in the ancient paradigm, there comes a surprise. A man who's revealed, it's, he's revealed as the warrior. His name is Jehu. He will be the mystery behind the man you know as Donald Trump. <laughs> Funny thing about Donald Trump, you just say his name and there's laughter. But I don't mean that in any way, any way or not, but there's kind of a release here. 
I wrote the harbinger as a prophetic warning. Years before this past election, people didn't realize that I was led to include Donald Trump in there. I didn't name him, but he's there. You can find it. In 2 Kings chapter 9, it says the prophet Elisha sends a prophet to the army camp to meet a man named Jehu. He takes Jehu alone and he says, thus says the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed you to become king of Israel to war against the house of Ahab. The mystery of Donald Trump is found in Jehu. Donald Trump, as far as America is concerned, as far as Israel is concerned, you have Cyrus. As far as America, Jehu. Jehu was not a politician, Donald Trump's was not a politician. Jehu was a fighter. Donald Trump's a fighter. He fights with everybody. <laughs> Jehu was not a gentleman. Well, Jehu was kind of wild, kind of out of control. You never knew what he was going to do next. Do I have to say anything? <laughs> Jehu would come on the national stage suddenly and shake up the status quo. So too would Donald Trump. Jehu will begin a race to the throne of Israel. Donald Trump will begin a race to the throne of America. Jehu had not lived a godly life. Neither had Donald Trump. But now this warrior is used to spite himself for God's purposes in this moment. Jehu mounts up his chariot, heads to the royal city. On the way, the watchman sees him coming and he says, the driving is like that of Jehu for he driveth furiously. (laughs) Donald Trump, you want to describe his race? Well, the word in Hebrew is not just furious. The word in Hebrew is also crazy. He will drive the driving of the the race to the throne is crazy. In fact, some of your Bibles say he driveth like a madman. Well, that was the race. Yet Jehu gets there. In his rise to the throne, listen, Jehu, the warrior, will come head to head against the former first lady. But there will come a showdown at the end. The paradigm says, well, there, therefore you have Donald Trump, you have Hillary Clinton, you got the warrior, you got this fighter, and then you got the former first lady, head to head. Now, if you remember, all the polls were saying Hillary Clinton was going to trounce Donald Trump. But the ancient paradigm said something else. It says when the warrior comes against the former first lady, it will be the warrior who will emerge triumphant. Now Jehu was also a judgment on King Joram's rule. There is a covenant that goes back 4,000 years. You know it because you love God here and you love prophecy. Whatever you do to the Jewish people shall be done to you. A year before the American election, there was an election in Israel. Benjamin Netanyahu was running for re-election. Obama intervened, if you remember. He sought to stop Netanyahu from being elected, try to overturn his, his stand, everything, but he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he was not successful. Netanyahu, kind of like this last election, it was a surprise, he won. And all, it's funny, because all the liberal media was, was celebrating that Netanyahu was over. And then all of a sudden, it all went, CNN went blank, black, nothing. There was no reporting. Finally, Netanyahu said, listen, they're not going to report it. I'll report it. I just won. But the thing is, whatever you do, so here, get this, if you intervene in the election of the nation of Israel, God will intervene in the election in your land. And if you try to overturn the legacy of the leader of Israel, God will overturn your legacy. When the warrior defeats the former first lady, it happens in the nation's, they both are in the nation's chief northeastern city, so too Donald Trump and, and Hillary Clinton, same city there. How long was Hillary Clinton in power? How long was she on the national stage? 22 years with her husband, first lady of Arkansas, then of America. After that, 12 years in government, she steps down for two years, comes back for two years to go forward to try to become president, so you put it together. 22 years with her husband, 14 years on her own political career. How long was Jezebel on the national stage? 22 years with her husband on her own, 14 years. The warrior then turns his attention to the capital city where he's got to go to become ruler of the land. So Donald Trump turns his attention to Washington. Jehu heads to the capital city with one agenda. What was that agenda? To drain the swamp. Literally, I mean, if you look violently, Donald Trump heads there with the same agenda. On the way to the throne, Jehu meets a man named Jehonadab. Now, Jehonadab was a mystery guy. He's identified, though, in virtually every Bible commentary as a representative of the the people of the land, the religious conservatives of the land. Amazingly, he meets with them. Donald Trump, on his way to to the capital, meets with religious conservatives. What What does Jehu do? Jehu basically says, listen, I'm with you. Are you with me? 
What did Donald Trump do? What did he say to Christians? He said, I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I'm for life. I'm for religious liberty. I'm for this. I'm for these values. Will you be with me? Jehonadab says yes, and he gets in the, the chariot with Jehu, and the two of them ride to the capital city. Well, so too, most religious conservatives said yes, because they knew the alternative. And in the same way, actually, Donald Trump actually made a partnership with a literal man, Mike Pence, who's a born-again Christian. And who's very much like, he was a man like John John Abbott abstained from any appearance of evil, all that. And the two of them head to the capital city. If Donald Trump was not supported by Christians or by many of them, he would not be president. When did all these things take place? They all happened. The queen was defeated. Jehu took the throne all in the 12th year of Joram. Well, if you take that, you take the beginning of Joram, you take his rise to power in 2004, that takes you to 2016. That's exactly when it happened. Now, when Jehu gets to the capital city, he sets out first thing to dismantle the cult of Baal, the killing of children, that, and to take down the temple of Baal that Ahab had built in the capital. Jehu destroys the temple of Baal. He dismantles the the cult of Baal. He cuts off government support, no more support for the killing of children. What did Donald Trump do? Despite, it doesn't matter who the person is. What did Donald Trump do? First thing he did was issue executive orders to overturn the pro-abortion orders of his predecessor. Folks, I'm so sorry we have to cut here, but that's all the time we have left. You can get the rest of his message on our 2018 conference video album that our announcer will tell you about in a moment. Well, that's our program for this week. I hope it's been a blessing to you, and I hope the Lord willing that you'll be back with us next week. Until then, this is Dave Reagan speaking for Lamb and Lion Ministries saying, Look up, be watchful, for our redemption is drawing near. A complete copy of the presentation you have just viewed is contained in our 2018 conference video album, together with the other five presentations that were made at the conference. They're provided on three DVD discs. Each presentation runs approximately 50 minutes in length for a total of 300 minutes of video footage. Along with Dr. David Reagan's presentation, the speakers include Robert Jeffress, pastor of First Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. He speaks on heavenly rewards, telling about the importance of the rewards, the types of rewards, and the basis for them. Billy Crone, pastor of Sunrise Baptist Church in Las Vegas, Nevada, and founder of Get A Life Ministries. He speaks about the hope for a last day's revival. In the process, he presents a powerful challenge to the church to arise from its lethargy and start proclaiming the gospel with boldness. Jan Markell, founder of Olive Tree Ministries in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and host of the nationally syndicated radio program, Understanding the Times. She gives a shocking presentation about the mockery of Bible prophecy that exists within the church today. Bill Caney, member of the White House Press Corps and founder of the internet news service called World Watch Daily. He presents an insightful overview of national and world events from a biblical perspective. And Jonathan Kahn, best-selling author and rabbi of a Messianic congregation in Wayne, New Jersey. He reveals a biblical blueprint for what is happening in our nation today as it shakes its collective fist at God. The album could be yours for a gift of $25 or more, including the cost of shipping. Just call the number you see on the screen Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time, or place your order through our website at lamblion.com. Thank you for joining us on today's Christ in Prophecy, a presentation of Lamb and Lion Ministries, a non-denominational ministry dedicated to teaching the fundamentals of biblical prophecy and proclaiming the soon return of Jesus.